Hello and welcome to Rookie Pirate Radio. I'm one of your hosts, Travis Hymas. The wonderful John Negroni will not be joining us this episode as he's enjoying a nice vacation. Uh, We know there's a new chapter out, but we'll be saving talking about the chapter itself until he returns. And uh, instead, I've invited uh, back the editor-in-chief of In Between Drafts, Allison Johnson. Hi, happy to be here to talk about One Piece. Yes, and we also have the head games editor of In Between Drafts, Evan Griffin. Hi, I've I've made a huge mistake, but I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> uh, what he means is a little bit of a deep lore cut uh, for the background of, of this podcast on our website is uh, both Evan and Ali have been uh, bullied through uh, a mutual acquaintance of all of ours too that's a strong word we we made (laughs) we made a bet one of you was bullied one of us was bullied yes (laughs) one of us and the acquaintance is married uh so it's harder to escape the um peer pressure I guess I'm not saying this is a cry for help but the onslaught you know I would would say is the word (laughs) You have referred yes. to him on this podcast already as a roommate once, so I, I felt acquaintance yes. was fair. <laughs> yeah, you know what is One Piece Quinn is my roommate. Same with Love Island Quinn. There's different tiers of Quinn, as he would tell you himself. I <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, and the the more we do this, the more he's going to become a mythical figure. That uh, in true One Piece fashion, we will introduce properly in like 12 years but for now uh both evan and ali have started actually consuming one piece uh whether that's of their own volition or not withstanding uh and you are engaging it with it differently um evan you're reading it right i i am reading it uh i have begun reading it in paper form uh by way of the viz media published uh combination volumes so i've read volumes one through six over the last week so that's about 52 chapters i think um so i i plan to continue reading it but i think i'm probably just gonna swap over to digital at this point um so yeah i have enjoyed reading it at least so we'll start there and ali you are watching the anime I am watching the anime, despite the fact that for my birthday, Christmas, and now Valentine's Day, as of last week, I've received physical copies uh, of One Piece to read. But yes, I am watching it as of right now. Oh, he's so brave. Uh, So, so brave. (laughs) Uh, so I, I've asked you both on here because, uh, frankly, I have a, a personal theory when it comes to starting One Piece, and that is that you should read it uh, for various reasons. And that's not specifically to knock on the anime. Me and John have talked about it on the show before, but uh, I, I think the manga is the, the the most direct and I think accessible way to consume the story. Um, I, I, Evan said how far he's gotten in the manga so far, but how many episodes of the anime have you watched, Ali? <laughs> Um, I think it's been 12 episodes, maybe 13. I think, okay. yeah, about 12 or 13 episodes. And That's... we are cruising in all honesty because we started it last week. And there's other things that we watch and do with our lives. And, you know, the me watching this was the back end of a bet or not a bet, a bargain. Where if Quinn watched two of my favorite anime that don't usually align with his tastes, I would then try this one out. And I'm just saying that mine took a lot longer to get through than what we're watching now. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're probably, st- we're still in the setting up the team section. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, 11, 12 episodes is about what you would get out of a regular anime season of like a modern day series. But uh, but as, as I warned him, One Piece is kind of the... Uh, <laughs> It's kind of a show that was made to have episodes to air every week rather than be a, a, a straight adaptation. So that's one of the reasons why I, I personally say reading it's great. Um, but uh, I'm going to go back to you, Allie, and I'm going to ask you first. 
what is your initial impression of the series as a whole, just knowing what you know now? Uh, eh, luckily, he's in the other room. I'm finding it kind of tedious so far. Um, what's keeping me going is that Luffy really is a fun character in general um, across the medium so far that I've seen. And I th- like to think that I've consumed a decent amount of anime at this point. But um, I think the world taking so long to come together probably pays off really well, like you said, in the manga. But in this case, it just feels like whenever the episode cuts to another scene at the end, I'm always shocked that there's more left because it already feels like it's been 30 minutes. And as we know, these episodes are probably like 23 minutes long. Uh, but I like it's fine. I keep waiting to for the hook that everybody else seems to experience with it. Cause it's not like I go into this hoping I hate something. Like I actually go into most things hoping I love it. But in this case, it's just taking some time. So for, uh, for a little bit of context there, uh, I did a quick check of the episode you're on. It looks like you are just, you just met Usopp. Does that sound about right? Yep. And he's just heard the plan where, you know, the, hidden pirate is going to be trying to kill the girl and that definitely kind of increased the tension of the series of which so far there's been not much but i yeah so i've just met him was shocked when he was called kid because i was like that is the oldest animated teenager i've ever seen and i watch sports anime but i think uh yeah so that's where i am and i'm hoping i like it more in 10 episodes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, and Evan, I'm going to ask you the same question. How do you feel about the series as a whole right now? Um, I will say that by starting to read it, it was slow to start in the same way that Ali is feeling. But the difference is I was able to consume that first, what was equal to 10 episodes. So let's just call it the first three volumes getting to Usopp's introduction. Um, it, it it takes a little bit of setting up because he's already like the fourth main character that you're getting introduced to. And I, at that point already felt like I don't really know a whole lot about Zoro or Nami. Um, and we're already introducing another one. I know another one's on the way and then there's going to be even more. Um, but I, I feel like Ali, uh, in, in terms of the storyline, that moment is kind of at the precipice where it really starts to allow the shonen nature of it to shine because you're seeing the villain character, Captain Kuro, is I think his real name, the guy, the, the butler with the poop on his jackets. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I, I feel like that that's kind of where it starts to really slowly unwrap its potential that you see through the Usopp arc. I definitely feel like having read through the Usopp part of the storyline that it definitely goes too long. Um, And it, it, it's definitely funny, but it leans into some jokes that like, like with the cat pirates that I feel like are just a little dated and they don't really, they don't make the universe feel tied together a whole lot but then again the first main villain was bugsy the clown so maybe i just need to kind of set my expectations for this is what villain characters are going to be like in one piece um but i'm thrilled that i have gotten to the stage that i'm at not just because i've gotten past the part where we introduce sanji who uh, my understanding is going to become the cook or rather, I know he's going to because I saw the show back when it aired on Toonami and have forgotten almost all of it. Um, but I have at least seen through the part where the restaurant gets uh, attacked by uh, a lot of different pirates. Um, what's the, I can't remember the name of the other captain, but he's the one that's got like ballistics in his pecs. Um, and then Zoro has a showdown with um, with Hawkeye, who had been alluded to a couple of different times. And Hawkeye is a character that um, really kind of conveys what the actual potential for the dangers in the world of piracy and on the grand line are like beyond the few kind of delicate islands that we've seen so far. So I'm, I'm at the moment where I'm like, okay, I can see where this is setting things up and I'm actually excited to kind of see where it goes. I just don't want to read so much so fast that I burn out on it. 
the next thing that I want to ask is, uh, since you both kind of mentioned you're getting you're getting used to the characters and everything, but you've you've each called out specific characters that have drawn attention to you. What is your overall perspective on on our lead characters? Do you like them? Are 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 they kind of thin? Where do you stand uh, in regards to following their story? Um. Again, I love Luffy so far because I feel like right out of the gate, he was so defined with a very like rich character, both in the voice actor who does a tremendous job, but also how he's written and animated. And it just feels like you get his essence through how he's drawn. And that's a lot of fun. Um, Zoro and Nami, for example, don't ring as true to me just because it seems like they're more fitting into either archetype type characters or they're just characters that exist with Luffy but have offered very little in terms of their own storyline or personality and for me Shonen it's usually works best when I love the characters like immediately you know um it's a difference for me with uh my hero or Demon Slayer too, where my hero I love all the characters and can slog through some of the slow storylines whereas Demon Slayer I don't really care about any of the characters much, uh, but I stay with it because of the fight scenes. Um, but one, I care about more. So in this case right now, it's kind of like I care about one character. Everybody else is kind of background noise as evidenced by the fact that I needed to look up names for the core characters uh, before this. But I, again, I'm hopeful. I want it to change and to be better for me as a viewer, but I feel like with people like you or John or Quinn, in this case, you know, it, it was instant. It seems like the love for it. So uh, it's funny you bring up my hero specifically. Um, and I love this little fun bit of trivia. Uh, so I, I'm going to drop it here. Uh, Horikoshi has actually been featured in a One Piece volume uh, from like years and years and years ago. Because in the in the in the manga and Evan, you'll see this too. Um, they they start doing fan art submissions where uh, Oda will feature art that that uh, the the kids who actually were reading the, the the series back when it was in chapter form all that all that way back would submit different artworks and everything. And he would put them on a big gallery. He was so proud of them and everything like that. And then fifteen years or so later. Uh, he had to pull one of those old artworks out and republish it because the kid who submitted it launched My Hero Academia. <laughs> that that you know, week I, in Show to Jump. I think I actually knew that, and it's what always shocks me is when I look up the creator of My Hero being essentially our age, and it does kind of inform or it speaks to what informs his storytelling. And I didn't mean to even compare the two. It was more my personal relationship with characters, but I do think that's a really funny anecdote. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, because I discussed doing this episode uh, with my spouse uh, last night. And I was like, "Oh, this is what we're gonna do," uh, and I even straight up said, "Like, I, I guarantee you, Ali is gonna like uh, Luffy the most because she likes Deku the most." <laughs> Oh, no. I mean, yes, <laughs> I do. There's a type of protagonist that I am definitely drawn to. Um, but uh, yeah, so you're you weren't wrong. I did. I do really like him. And again, the voice actor cracks me up. She is a legend, uh, truly, um, th that she still sounds more or less the same now as way, way back in 19, like 99. That's it's nuts. It voice actors are crazy talented. Evan, what about you? What it, it, do you, do you have a, do you have a favorite character yet? Oh, it's, it's, obviously, it? it's obviously Luffy. Luffy is the, the one of the best main characters that you can get. And it's not like, the it's not like the things that I like about him are any different than you would get out of Deku or Naruto even, but it's still the kind of thing that I really like about a main character where he is so passionate about his main goal that he uses it as a way to take other people who are really having a hard time in their lives. Like, um, uh, God, what's that? What's the kid like on that first, that first chapter after the prologue? Um, 
Uh, you're thinking Cody. of Kobe? Kobe. 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 Yeah. Even just, just Kobe, the way he impacts Kobe and Zorro, um, he just has this ability to use his own goal as a way to elevate what everybody else wants out of their own lives and it it's it, sometimes it kind of like got to me not gonna lie like there was a there was a second where i got kind of reclaimed where i'm like damn like he really just wants people to happily do the things that care the most to them and that's that's a great that's a great main character that and he is just such a uh not not an idiot but he is an idiot he he's just he's just one of those like lovable himbos uh that you get in that kind of medium and he will absolutely dive into a problem head first often with his neck elongated um and he just has a lot of physical comedy that really works for at least this early stage and i'm sure that we'll see more creative things uh, done with his gum powers um but that's that's what i like about it is not just the the way that he inspires characters but the way that the physical comedy is animated and the way that his uh oda draws his like facial expression um is just really endearing um so that's really fun the other characters i I can definitely see where Ali is coming from. I don't quite see them so much as white noise, but that's just kind of because I'm like taking the time to like read through what their speech bubbles are and kind of piece together, like how it's informing their character a bit. But like the only, the only thing that's really kind of propelling me through like seeing what's going to happen is how does Luffy get his crew? Like how do we get Luffy to his goal? Uh, that, yeah, that makes sense. Um, one thing too, because I know, I know, for example, that uh, we probably have some folks listening that are actively vibrating right now. Uh, so I do want to point out a couple of things. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to correct actively anybody. Actively vibrating while <laughs> lurking behind me, reading it at one point. So I have experienced um, this in person, and I'm sorry that I don't know the things that I don't already know. You don't already let know. me just say first that it doesn't matter because I'm still enjoying it and understanding what the story is throwing at me already. Anyway, and if there's background characters or whatever that are important later on, that's Do Flamingo. Fine, I'll deal with it later. <laughs> Evan, what you if are, Travis are, wasn't going to say anything about that? You, uh, you are our first swear word on this. <laughs> Sorry, you can censor it. Me, I don't even do that. Well done. <laughs> um, no, uh, what I was going to say is, uh, it's worth pointing out just, uh, just for the audience that uh, a part of why uh, I think uh, the the manga and anime division is so different is that the story is not ordered in the same way. Uh, so there are things, uh, Evan, that you have seen in the manga that will be later episodes for Ali. Huh? Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. it, it, yeah. Uh, in fact, Kobe is the first thing that you see in the anime. And then you get um, Luffy's. Uh, oh, and, origin the, and story. then you get Shanks afterwards. Yeah. Yes. Oh, OK. So and and that's just a that's just a loose example for right now. Um, so when Ali says something like, you know, Zoro is kind of feels like background noise. Well, you haven't had the Zoro flashback yet, which sounds like a it sounds like a correct uh, like a a correction. But no, like the, literally, it, it has not come up yet. So, oh, that's like one of the first things that I had to read about him was that yeah. that little flashback. Yeah, so there there are some there are some choices made um, in the production schedule that change that up a little bit. The general direction is fine, and it gets less like that uh, once you get through the initial like um, first few arcs. But uh, but it's definitely something that happens. So that's I for the for the vibrators in the audience. Y- yes, we know it's a little bit out of order and everything. Um, but this this is the series as it presents itself as, at its beginning, and I've never heard a One Piece fan say not to you know don't read East Blue for example because it's slow. It's like skipping JoJo parts. It's a very contentious thing um, <laughs> among the community. I will say though, Travis, that your incentive at first was to tell Quinn to have me watch just the first movie to try to speed my way through the drudgery. It Ooh. seems like of the first couple stories so do you suggest that to people who want to jump into the anime but don't want to get stalled so so um not necessarily the first movie because they've been making one piece movies for a while but or um, ova or something yeah, whatever yeah, they it was a, yeah they made an ova it's called episode of east blue and what it is 
is a, it's a more modernized telling of the first saga of One Piece, which is the first several arcs kind of condensed into one. Kind of like um, how the, the Gundam movies do. Yes, that's a, that's a good way of thinking about it. It's condensed. It condenses the whole thing down into an hour and a half or so, uh, maybe a little bit less. Um, and that is what I recommend because, again, I have hot takes about the anime, uh, most of which are just, you know, examples of the times. Again, they had to do things out of order. Um, they arranged it in such a way to meet production schedules and things like that. So that changes the way uh, that that you're going to experience some of the story. And I think you can see that just in, in a little bit of this conversation. Um, the, the episode of East Blue, it is something that I would recommend to somebody going in completely blind who isn't willing to be in there for the long haul. Um, just because if you want to see what excites people and this, I'm going to try to answer this in a way that isn't like super spoilery or anything. Um, but there is a moment in the first saga of one piece and, and neither are you of you are there yet. Uh, but there is a moment um where it it goes from pretty decent kind of fun little manga to oh this is actually about something this is actually going to do something it's that big moment um a comparison point might be um the zabuza and haku fight in naruto where we went from kind of set up to oh we're gonna we're upping the ante we're upping the stakes um, we're just kind of changing tone a little bit to make a point, that kind of thing. Um, there is a moment that comes in this first saga. And so that OVA more or less kind of builds itself around that moment. So I think it's a good introduction if you're going in completely blind. Um, of course, fans will tell you, oh, well, you're going to miss this. You're going to miss this. And it's all set up for yada, yada, yada. That doesn't say that you can't go back. There's nothing to stop you from going back. Um, I am. I will always be a shill for the, the Shonen Jump app. It's $3 a month. You can go back and read as much One Piece as your heart desires at any time. Um, but, but in, if it, you know, it's one of those things where it's tough because you love a thing, right? You don't want to, uh, you don't want to necessarily criticize the thing that you love. But I do have to acknowledge, you know, the beginning parts of a '90s shonen manga are just kind of different than today. Uh, that's just a reality of the situation. I would also like to add, as somebody who reviews things decently regularly, uh, life is short; shows are long. If you hear that a first season of something isn't that great and say it has, in this case, 20 years of material, I think it's fine to skip a season sometimes. This might be a hot take, but there's a reason why, like, for Parks and Recreation, you don't watch season one if you want to get to season two. You just start with season two when you know Sanji got good. Um, but I understand that a lot of people will disagree with me, but as somebody who is a pretty, um, I, I consume a lot of media in my life. Um, and I just think that sometimes if you need to cut a corner to get to the stuff that is the most worthwhile, especially in a show that is 20 seasons deep, I think it's okay. But I, I have a, feel free I have to yell a similar, at me. I have a similar feeling on that alley because Truth be told, like when Travis and I, we 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 were talking about making me read One Piece and getting you and I on a podcast to talk about One Piece, like for well over a year ago, um, before I even moved, honestly. And it's this: I have the same angle as Ali, where it's never that I doubted One Piece was good. It was because um, it was more. I have so many other things to consume in terms of media that I want to consume. Um, and I had been out of the loop on anime for so long, like in the year that it took from us having that initial conversation to uh, me actually d taking the dive, taking the plunge into the East Blue. Uh, I had finished the original Cowboy Bebop series in the movie because I had never finished those. I had watched like all the works by Masaki Yuasa. I had seen uh, Kill a Kill. I had seen like like a caught up on um uh, my hero academia in its entirety and uh, in the amount of time that it took me even this past week to blow through east blue uh, sorry for the first six volumes of east blue and i enjoyed them i could have caught up completely with kaiju number eight which is a great manga but i haven't uh, i've only just barely started it um but I do at least want to give credit to the, the fact that even though it's an older format and it's kind of hard to get into, 
but the second I clicked with it, I just started cruising and I have to, I have to commend it for that. But it is also just one of those things where how do you get your foot in the door? And if it's taking a 90 minute OVA to get people interested in it and then you really love it, you can always just go back. That's totally fine to do. I'm curious also, Travis, if this isn't derailing too much and just tell me to shut up if I am, but with John, like I know me and him have similar book tastes with fantasy. Like we both love the wheel of time series, which are dense fantasy stories. You know, they're 12, 14 books long. Uh, There's different characters added every single book. Um, The lore is expansive. And again, it's just dense is the best word for me. It's why I'm kind of slow to recommend it to people because it's an older fantasy fantasy series. And it also has that density to story. So do you think recommending one piece like, do you recommend it to everybody or do you recommend it to very specific type of fans who engage with a certain either amount of things or have a certain taste for certain animes already? Or is it like a no, everybody will enjoy this? So this is kind of a bloated uh, answer, I guess, to that question, because uh, there's actually a little bit of a phenomenon that I've witnessed in the past couple of years. And it's a huge reason why I wanted to make a push to produce this podcast in the first place. Um, A lot of people who are big Wheel of Time and Fantasy fans used the pandemic to read One Piece. It's a it's it's an actual book like booktuber phenomenon that I have personally witnessed through the YouTube algorithm starting to recommend me creators that I would not have uh, because I don't do a lot of book tubing um, that I would have never uh, engaged with or seen. But they started reading one piece more or less based on that exact analysis of of things like the Wheel of Time or the Brandon Sanderson uh, Cosmere. just folks who would have never engaged with manga as a genre. Um, they never touched it. They don't, they never watched anime as a kid, anything like that. They were big book nerds. They were reading Aragon, all those things. Um, and people are like, just give it a try. Just give it a try. And they've become one piece content creators now, <laughs> like, like a huge piece of their like production every, uh, for some of these every week that they're making YouTube videos are about one piece, just like, manga nerds who've been reading it forever um so i actually do compare it a lot to those big rich um in-depth fantasies uh because it does a whole lot of that again it's a big grand scheme kind of thing where uh fans probably even listening to this right now are like hearing you guys say these very early on things and they've heard it a hundred times and they're thinking and they're screaming Hey, you trust us. You just got to get to X Island. You just got to get to this. But the, but the reality is, is that you have to start somewhere. Um, so when it comes to recommending it, that's again, why I cut straight to the, you should just read it because what is a couple of episodes of an anime is one chapter in the manga. You can know pretty much right out of the gate. If it's going to be something for you within the first few chapters of, of the manga, Um, And I do generally recommend it to most people because you're right hearing, you know, there's a thousand 74 episodes of the anime is a lot. And it's worth noting, you do not nor should not watch all of it. Um, A lot of it is filler. A lot of it is just filling a schedule. Uh, Some of it's even dragged out. You can skip entire battle episodes and not miss that much because they have to do. They have to meet a, a broadcast schedule. Whereas the manga doesn't have to do that. And in fact, most of the time, the biggest problem that people reading One Piece that are caught up have is that uh, Echiro Oda is a human and needs to take a break every once in a while. So uh, he paces, he's been pacing chapters to reach certain high points and like to be continued moments to coalesce with those breaks that he takes so that we have more time to just sit and think about the stuff that he's just dropped on us. Uh, And it's, it's t- it's it's very clever um, to see him in, like incorporate those breaks into the structure, uh, but it can be a lot. It can be a lot um, to take on. Uh, but nobody that I've recommended it to over the years has ever come away hating it. Ever, they may not be into it because they just can't dedicate the time, like like you mentioned, um, or uh, you know, or there are certain characters who come in and out of the story, and while they're out of the story, you're not engaged with it. You know that happens for people too. Um, 
my spouse would be an example of that. I, I keep her appraised of what's going on until certain characters come back to the story, and then she'll come back and read it. Uh, so it's, that happens all the time. Um, but I've, I've never had somebody come back and say, this is the worst thing I've ever consumed. I think there is a genuine quality here that just appeals to a lot of people, um, just either from a humor standpoint or an adventure standpoint. Um, once you figure out, I think we're in an age where like pretty much anybody can handle a big universe uh, with continuity and rules and stuff. Um, the fact that anime is such a big deal right now, uh, those are all factors that I think are leading to people wanting to engage with the series more than they did, uh, you know, 15 years ago when four kids was butchering the anime and uh, it wasn't airing on Toonami like the other shows were. Um, and so like a whole generation just didn't engage with it too much. Cause they thought it was the goofy one that four kids censored a bunch of, uh, that's a really long answer to that question, but the, 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 the long and short of it is I will tell everybody to give it a try. Yeah. And you know, I sometimes think I maybe missed the right moment to watch it and Quinn can attest to this, but during the first year of the quarantine, I used to joke and say, well, if it goes on much longer because we were consuming so much anime at that point, it was kind of a genuine lifeline, which is a ridiculous thing to say, but I do think it kept us relatively sane. Um, but I kept joking, you know, if it goes on longer and jokes on me, uh, we'll just start one piece because that will never end and we'll always have something to watch. And he didn't want to watch it then. But so I do wonder if I'd started watching it kind of when I had that abundance of time, if maybe I would have sunk into it more. And again, not that like a long piece of fiction is any bit of a deterrent to me. I usually love that kind of stuff. But in this case, just because I know what Evan is reading is different to what I'm watching, it makes it kind of a slower process. Would you be interested in switching over, no, like hearing, hearing us talk about it? Kind of. So what I was thinking is that so the total episodes of the two shows that I had Quinn watch <laughs> are 50 episodes. So I'm thinking I give it 50. And if by 50, I'm like, nah, I have to tap out. It's just not for me. I might try reading it a little bit just to see if I have a different experience. Um, but I am more interested. I just don't read a lot of manga, in all honesty. And if I do, I kind of gravitate towards like, like, I want to read some of the rom-coms. <laughs> I want to read the slice of life. For me, I think the action or the shonen ones, I do love seeing visualized because I'm such a sucker for that style of animation. Um, but I might give it a try just because, again, it's a classic for, or it's a modern classic for a reason. But I think that is my benchmark right now is I'm going to get to 50 episodes. And if it's not working, I'll give it a couple volumes, chapters, and Try my best to love what he loves and what love what all of you love. Um, but yeah. Um, but if maybe. I, so um, if I can insert as well, um, because I also had not been reading manga a lot, like I would pick up the shonen magazines back in the day. Maybe I would skim through the One Piece chapters and have no idea what was going on, but I was reading it for like Naruto back then. Um Truth be told, like the reason that Quinn and myself got into manga again was because of Chainsaw Man. I even just read like the uh, last week's chapter this morning and I don't I, this wouldn't even be possible. Like this moment of us recording here, if it weren't for Chainsaw Man being such an engaging book uh, for us to really sink our teeth into. Um, and then Quinn was just like jonesing for more. Um, and that's really the moment that he really dove into, into one piece. Um, and I think there's something to be, uh, said for that, like in terms of taking the plunge into manga, cause I've been reading a, a broader variety of it. Like I've started to read the, um, the Shibuya arc of like Jujutsu Kaisen. I picked up my love story, which I adore. Like there's, so much fantastic uh manga to read and it's just kind of funny like like, like i mentioned like i started kaiju number eight as well um that like i i do want to keep trucking along on 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 one piece and i couldn't possibly imagine watching it i might like go back and check out what the ova looks like once i know what like the references are going to be um, like I actually watched, I think the last episode that Ali saw with her uh, when I was visiting uh, yesterday and 
it, it just feels like exactly what those kinds of shows were back in the 90s, early aughts. And there's a charm to them, but it there's a difference between going back and reflecting on an old episode of Inuyasha for the nostalgia and just kind of like ha- having a vibe of like the early morning or late night kind of anime vibe and actually sitting down and watching something that gigantic. And I do want to point out just as we're talking about like quote unquote old anime and dating or (laughs) making us feel old because these are shows from the nineties. We are nineties kids, but there are nineties anime that I adore and are some of my favorites. Like, obviously I enjoy Cowboy Bebop, but like, you know, Evangelion is one of my favorite series pieces of media. The the, the, the 20, the 20 to 26 episode ones. Yeah. (laughs) No, sure. But yeah, so that's what I'm saying. But I'm, I just want to make sure it's clear that we're not like boo old anime. <laughs> it's more like this one in particular. Oh, no, the starting. Of, of course not. Yeah, no. <laughs> but yeah, I, I kind of agree about, you know, maybe jumping ship and reading it and then kind of visiting some of the bigger moments. And it's not like I haven't already been shown some of the bigger moments because my roommate, as we mentioned, uh, can't stop himself from watching the scenes that he wants to see after he's read them. So I've seen some of the bigger things that happen. I am, you know, suitably spoiled in a lot of the crazier I, I'm sequences. Also, I'm also suitably spoiled. I've been told how often that Luffy accidentally goes to sleep and everybody else has to solve a problem. Oh, I have actual things that I don't think you've been spoiled of that would maybe upset you. The people listening to know that I know. Um, I think Travis knows, but yeah. So uh, I do it, know, and fine. it has it has upset us as a as a, as a fan base for five hundred <laughs> chapters. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it has. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just interesting coming at this series from like a lot of different points of views, like. There's the point of view of me just being an anime fan. So I want to watch the classics. It's why there's a couple shows, including Naruto, that I still need to kind of wade through. But also just to be surrounded by people who love a thing, you want to love the thing too. Like that's what makes it fun is to talk to people who are like-minded and who kind of come together for a shared passion of media or, or something like that. I'm not wording it quite right. But um. So I do feel a bit of pressure of like, oh, I want to like it, but I want to like it for them, too. I, I totally get that. That's a part of why uh, I thought this little little round table was such a such an interesting idea, because I don't want to come at this with you guys to like be like, you just don't understand uh, or be really pushy about it. Because, uh, you know, I've been a One Piece fan since I was a kid. Uh, so I've I've had a lot of time to acclimate to the desire to push this down everyone's throat all the time. Um, and, and it does happen. It's a phenomenon. Um, I don't know uh, how familiar you are with Twitch streamers, uh, Ali, but a, a big, big Twitch politics streamer, uh, Hassan Piker, has uh, very uh, aggressively pushed back against watching One Piece for a long time with his audience. Um, they would try to get him to watch it and he'd be like, no, you guys sound like Christians. <laughs> Calm down. Uh, uh, so I was going to ask about that. I didn't know that about Hassan, and that absolutely sounds like a Hassan thing to do. But it does sometimes feel a little culty. <laughs> it does. It does. And the most hilarious part of it is he finally caved one night when he was bored, started watching it. He has only been watching it like Ali has, um, just in the order as it presents itself, uh, skipping filler. And um, a few a few weeks ago, he did it. He did the thing. Somebody rated into his channel and he started justifying the one piece conversation to all of these new audience members that came in in real time and then had to stop and go, oh, no, I've become the guy who doesn't shut up about one piece. I did. This is how it happens. And that is, in fact, how it happens. So so being able to to, to give you guys a space to process that away from from that is, I, I think, I, helpful. I recently- 
I recently experienced a much more diluted version of that by being converted to the the Church of Beast Stars because I used to have the same reaction that everybody else Hell did. Yeah, it, it's it's God Usopp. Great, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's really good. And now I'm on the other side where I'm seeing people have the same resistance that I did. Where it's like I don't want to watch the furry show. I'm, it's so much more than that, though, and. I can totally see that happening um, when I get far enough down into into One Piece. And truthfully, uh, I mean, Travis, I've been doing stuff like that with stuff that I since I was a kid, like Legend of Zelda is a re- is a religion. I mean, it, it basically on the precipice of being one. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's just the nature of fandom a little bit, too, is is like Ali was saying, you want people to love the things that you love because you love them and you care so much about them. You want to share them with people. Um, and that's that's a great thing, uh, whether it's One Piece or, or anything else. Um, you know, th- I think it's a natural inclination to want to share the things that give you joy. Um, and I, th- I think that's good, even if we could stand to be a little bit more normal about it. Yeah, but also like sometimes you have a friend who lives nearby, say like Evan, and he comes over. And he has to watch what we love. And through that, <laughs> he ends up loving it too. And I, I know just think about that's volleyball a- now. <laughs> that, I know. Uh, and I can tell you want to quit that one. And my two gremlin roommates won't, won't allow it. Um, I, I did not say that. You, I know. I know you didn't say it. I said, I can tell it is not. You are being very polite when you are over, it feels like. Is my point. But um, yeah, no, I do. I really agree about just loving things with people. <laughs> it's great. Well, uh, and and uh, Ali, you said you're going to give it about 50 episodes. Um, I'm doing some math here. So subtracting filler, that <laughs> will take you to the end of the East Blue Saga. So that will be the first whole portion of One Piece. Um, so I which, think I'm being fair. Yeah, I think you're being more fair. Uh, notably... Um, just as a little bit of a little bit of a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I, I was that expecting is, to see way more episodes than that. <laughs> uh, that's with subtracting filler, uh, to be clear. Oh, uh, oh, um, oh, oh, oh that's why. Uh, which I do have a I do have a list that I've provided <laughs> Quinn to make sure you don't have to go through filler, Ali. Uh, but uh, oh. um, I wrote that when we were originally creating this podcast. Uh, but uh, also. Also, just a little bit of a, a wink, wink there. Uh, that is also where I predict the Netflix live action series will go um, before its first season is up based on characters that they've cast and stuff. In like so, 12 episodes? Just to give you an idea of how much the, the, the anime drags its feet. Uh, yes, that's actually what I believe. But also, is the live action going to be an hour long episode for each episode? Because that can take it, that that's you know like four episodes of the anime yeah. <laughs> so yeah, i true. think it's not that unreasonable no i i think it's perfectly reasonable and evan uh, i say all that to say uh you you've you've implied that you're going to keep reading it are are you going to are you at a place where you're sufficiently hooked or is this uh you're gonna well, give it a I few more like, i don't like how the volume uh setups kind of uh leave off on like cliffhangers like the last page i saw was sanji kicking a fish and i'm like okay what 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 what's happening now and um i don't know how many more chapters i have left of east blue but i definitely at least plan to have finished east blue um and i mean if i keep going from there maybe i'll just go a little slower um, but you know, I'll, I'll, I, I'm enjoying it. So I will keep reading it. I'll just probably just add it to my rotation and instead of just plowing through. Very cool. Very cool. Now, uh, I'm going to ask one final question. Uh, if, if you were, if you each were to give a small review, just as a whole, like a, a, a review score of sorts to what you've consumed so far, what would you assign it? And you can be honest. You can be totally honest. You can't hurt my feelings. Evan, you go first. Of what I've read so far, yeah. If you if I were to if I were to tell you to give me a review score right now, I'd probably go like a solid like seven and a half, eight, like eight eight and a half at like its highest points so far. Out of ten, uh, yeah. we usually we on the site we usually do uh, out of ten. Sorry, I should have clarified that. Uh I think that sounds fair for me personally. I'd probably give it a seven out of ten and have it front loaded with the fact that. I'm reading it based on the fact that I know the quality is there, but if I'm injecting a bit of a personal 
uh, preference, that's what docks the points. Um, but in terms of just like artistry and storytelling capabilities, like clearly it's good. It's just not necessarily my, it's not grabbing my attention the way it's grabbed others, I guess. I would be curious, Allie, like if you were to uh, next time you watch like the next like three to four episodes, I'd be curious like where you're at because you'll be like in the middle of where that Usopp storyline introduction really kind of starts to hit its stride. Um, So I'd be curious uh, how you feel about it when that kind of when that part kind of cools down a little bit. Oh, I'm sure you all will hear about what I think about it as I continue this journey. Uh, And for anybody out there who wants a really good show to pair with it, I think I have had the Galaxy Mind genius revelation. And we are watching One Piece Whiz Mash because both shows took way too long. So, uh, but both have ardent fans and for good reason. So that is my recommendation. And they both have a Hawkeye. Well, look at that. That I, I laugh. I'm on mute, right? I was on mute, but I laughed extremely hard at that uh, that little wine and cheese pairing that you just presented. Um, it is genuinely, I think, a perfect pairing, especially as we've watched them back to back. It's like how Quinn and I started watching Lost and Twin Peaks together. And we do this because like he's watched one and I've watched the other. And our, our co- it's our marital uh, contract to meet in the middle. Um, so mine is, you've never seen Mash? Fine, we're going to watch a story about a war that took longer to tell the story than the war took to end. And we're going to watch the longest anime ever. You know, whatever works uh, that, I mean, when, when you get a little bit farther, I might have a chat with you about that little pairing, a little, uh, a little bit more uh, themes and whatnot. But uh, I do want to thank both of you, Ali and Evan for joining us on this episode Uh, to the listeners really quick. um, I'm curious how you feel about what is the best way to engage with one piece uh to get started um did you are you uh an anime purist and couldn't stand for my slander or um do you uh also tell everybody to sign up for the shonen jump app anytime you get the opportunity uh please uh feel free to join the in between drafts discord we have uh, a one piece spoilers channel for those of you who are listening to our chapter recaps and also a general channel so that uh, we don't ruin the fun for everyone else um and i would love to hear your thoughts uh otherwise we will be back uh soon as soon as john returns with uh chapter reviews again and uh if you guys really liked hearing ali and evan's thoughts on this let us know as well and we may uh do another check-in when uh we get to the end of east blue for these two other than that i've been travis hymas for rookie pirate radio thank you for listening